everybody, Dave the Pipe Pirate here for the second time, even though you don't know about the first time. And we are talking pipe tobacco and reviews and a whole bunch of stuff that, you know, frankly, we may have already talked about. It's like deja vu all over again. And here to have the feeling of deja vu with me is Greg the Badger Piper. How are you doing tonight, Greg? I'm doing good. How about you? Not bad, not bad. The kids have been good. The baby's getting there on the sleep it's it's been fun it's been an interesting week although not as interesting as yours yes yes it's uh been quite (laughs) quite busy here uh, in the states uh just with everything going on at the moment uh but you know other than that uh, it's been it's been okay we've been putting up some uh, decals up in uh, my son's room to give it a foresty feel, and uh, that's so that's going kind of fun. Uh, that uh, that's been kind of fun. Yeah. So to get to my deja vu comment, Greg and I have actually recorded this episode once already tonight. Went back to do a quick check to make sure everything was okay, and I was sounding like I was only halfway here. It was just ta- 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 that. That's what it was doing. It's. He was coming through great, but on my end, I was not. So, rendered the episode unusable. So, here we are, recording again. Just to pull the curtain back there a little bit. That's okay, though. You know, we're here already. And, uh, you know, I can't think of another topic that I wouldn't mind doing another discussion on than just talking about pipe tobacco. Yeah, because that's what we're going to do tonight. We're talking pipe tobacco. We each picked out two, maybe three blends that uh, we both enjoy that are readily available for you, which was a task for me because a lot of my cellar is tobacco that is no longer available. Um, but we, I did manage to find a couple. One I've talked about before, one I've talked about before, but you didn't get to hear it because, well, I had to delete it. But right at the moment, I am smoking this Country Squire pipe this nice brandy with some Stokeby Luxury Bullseye Flake, but I am coming to the end of it. And when I do, I'll be switching over to this nice little Joby pinch that I have here, an eBay find, with some Angry Cornishman from the Country Squire. What about you, Greg? What are you smoking currently? And what have you smoked? Because I know you finished a bowl already. Yes, well, I will... um... I smoked it uh, earlier. I was smoking one of the blends that I, I was going to talk about. Uh, I actually have all three out of here, out here with me, and so I'll re- to make uh, switch things up for this version. I'll uh, talk about that one later, and uh, instead, uh, in this nice little uh, Peterson, which was also an eBay find uh, about two years ago, um, I am smoking uh, uh, GL pieces uh, sextant. All right. So, uh, why don't you start? Actually, no. I, you mm-hmm. started last time. I'll start this time. So, I'm starting out with the, the Luxury Bullseye Flake. It's a, a tobacco that I've talked about before. If you are a regular listener to the show, you might have heard it in the Flashback Friday from Maple City Pipecast Days. That I remastered the about seven-minute review I did on that tobacco a few years back. So go back and listen to it. Listen to what I said then and see if it sounds anything similar to what I said now. I should do that because I don't even remember what I said in that thing. And I remastered it a few weeks ago. But this is a Virginia Perique blend. Um, I don't have the description up in front of me anymore on smokingpipes.com. So I will have to go look that up again. But uh, it's Virginia Perique and it's got some Cavendish in it. Black Cavendish specifically. And uh, it's a nice, easy smoke. Something that you, you know, you might enjoy if you are, you know, a fan of something spicy. Like I like Mexican food, um, which, which helps that my wife is Mexican and knows how to cook Mexican food. So there's a bonus, but I like the spice in the, in the Mexican and that what is what, the Perique does remind me of 
in this particular blend and any uh, Virginia Perique blend, to be honest, is what I think of, you know, chili, quesadillas, enchiladas, although you don't necessarily get spice in a quesadilla, it's usually a cheese thing. Here's the description. Luxury Bullseye Flake is a delightful blend of Virginias and Perique with a touch of Black Cavendish, thinly sliced into neat bullseye coins. And I got it right this time. Yes. And actually, uh, one of the things that I failed to mention last time that uh, I think is worth uh, discussing at this point is uh, I really like the the coin uh, presentation that it comes in. You know, the fact that they're you know it's sliced into coins and mm-hmm. and uh, rub it out and uh, or uh, stuff it into your pipe and and smoke it that way. It's one of the more uh, visually pleasing, I think, uh, tobaccos that uh, you get. Yes, it is. Because this is also not the only uh, vapor that's presented that way. I know Escudo is a coin style Virginia Perique. I think it might also have some Cavendish or something in the center as well. I'm not sure on that. Mm-hmm. And uh, McBaron had a blend called Stockton, which was uh, also in coin shape, but it was a little bit smaller. Okay. I believe that blend is out of production now, other than the occasional uh, reappearance. Nice. But yeah, I I really do enjoy it. Like, I mean, when we were discussing it before, which of course you guys don't don't get to hear, um, we mentioned you know the Cavendish in this blend and another blend. We, we were talking about how the Cavendish, you know, cuts the spice down to a, like a manageable level. Not like something if you're going to say smoke C&D's exclusive, which is 50% Perique, and that's a hit and a half. Let me tell you, I've got some of that. I I bought a whole bunch of it and split it off into tins. I'm still working on a tin from 2016, so that tells you right there, there's a lot of Perique in that thing. You only bring that out when you want to get a little little spice hit. And if you don't smoke it the right way, you're going to get that, that turn your stomach gets if you get a really strong blend. Yeah, so it's very good for beginners. Oh, yes. If you're a beginner, go buy exclusive. That's what you should do. That's what I did. I am not kidding. I was like a year in and uh, just got to the local pipe club. And uh, guys, do you like uh, Virginia Freak? Don't know. Never tried it. Well, here, try this. And it was exclusive. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. So, what about you, Greg? What do you got? Uh, what are you going to talk about first this time? A uh, sextant uh, by uh, a, a different Greg, uh, Greg L. Peace, and uh, sextant is uh, it, it's a very interesting blend uh, from SmokingPipes.com. It says. Uh, Sextant uh, from GL Peace is a classic mixture harmoniously married to a navy flake. Ripe Virginia tobaccos are first blended with the Cypress uh, Latakia, fine orientals, and a touch of dark fried Kentucky wheat, and then infused with a hint of dark rum before gently pressed, matured, and sliced. The flavor is rich, bold, and satisfying. The aroma, an enchanting interweaving of traditions and of course you know navy flakes that's uh one of the earlier type of blends because that was a type of tobacco that sailors would smoke uh mm-hmm. hence the navy flake uh because the rum would acted as a uh, casing and preservative uh, for the tobacco and uh which is why uh you know you any rum blend tends to be classified as a uh a navy flake and you know navy flake was one of the earliest non-aromatic type uh, tobaccos that i started smoking and uh with uh mcbaron's uh navy flake which is uh the standard i hold all navy flakes to and uh this one is a very good one because it's uh unique with uh combining an english blend a, a, a navy flake with with an english blend so you get the smokiness, 
of uh, you know, the Latakia mixed in with uh, the rum sweetness of a Navy Flake. And it combines all together to really be something unique. And it's something that you know, I recommend all English, English blend lovers or Navy Flake fans to give a try. Sounds good. I mean, I'm not much in the way of Navy Flake. Of course, I haven't really smoked much Navy Flake, so I can't really say. It's like it's like when you're trying new foods. You you have to try them before you can say you like them. Although I I dis I disagree with people who say you can't say you don't like it if you haven't tried it. I say yes you can because you haven't tried it, so you don't like it. Whether you don't like it after you're done trying it, it's one thing. But until you try it, you can't like it. My mom is a big believer in that uh, in that uh, concept. So is my wife. She keeps using it on my son. And I keep going after after she's done and he's in bed. I go, you know, he really can not like it because he hasn't tried it. Right. Like, I'm not going to go out there and try head cheese. You know, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to like it. The name itself is enough to say, no, I don't want to have any of that. Yes, it's the, it's the cheese you don't want to have. Yep. And I'll tell you guys a little secret. When we recorded this episode the last time, it was about this time in the episode where I realized I hadn't put the background music on. And guess what? I did it again. I just turned it on. <laughs> Okay, let's see where we are here. Just got to check my bull. I think I'm done with this bullseye. Yeah, there's a little bit left there, but not enough to, not enough to be worried about. Which, when you think about it, I started smoking this pipe over an hour ago. That's pretty good. Okay, so we're actually, I'm actually moving on to my next selection for our tobacco talk, which is the blend Angry Cornishman from the Country Squire. I'm just going to light her up. And, you know, last time I struggled a little bit talking about this blend, maybe smoking it while talking about it will help me out a little bit. first thing I noticed right away and I don't normally notice this but it may come down to the fact that I was smoking that uh, luxury bullseye for over an hour I actually got the room note this time off the charring light something that doesn't normally happen for me and for an English blend well you do well I I, I did get the you know the the smoky um barbecue type smell that you expect to get from an English blend. There's there's also a sweetness to it too that I'm I'm picking up. Something that I don't normally associate with uh an English blend. But the description uh, John David has over on the CountrySquireOnline.com where you can go and buy all of these delicious artisanal blends is this. Our classic English blend with an extra helping of Latakia providing an even more robust smoke, a rich velvety taste that is sure to please. And the base for Angry, Cor Ang Angry Cornishman is straight Cornishman um, it's an English blend obviously as well um, 
which was a favorite blend of the shop's founder, Jim Reeves, and thus why it is still in production today. John David does like to honor the Reeves family because they gave him his start and he ended up buying the business off of them at the right time. He seems to be doing quite well with it. That and Country Squire Radio probably helps. But this is definitely so. this is definitely a full body in English blend. It is a nice smoky taste. I don't get any bite off of any of his blends, which is always a plus when you're even if you're a newer smoker, I would definitely recommend any aromatic English, Scottish, whatever blends are or that John David makes over there in bulk. If you're in Jackson, go to the Country Squire, try them out. Great stuff. If you're not, get online. Go buy some. Get a couple ounces of each. And, you know, stagger it out, of course. You don't want to, you know, break the bank trying these tobaccos. But I highly recommend any Country Squire blend, even the ones I don't like, because well, I haven't tried them yet. Yeah, I've yet to try a uh, any of the blends from Country Squire, but they're definitely on my list of uh, blends to try for sure. And definitely the place uh, is on my list of uh, pipe places I want to visit one day, which uh, one of these days we'll have to do a, uh, a topic on uh, pipe road trip uh, uh, destinations we want to make someday. Yeah, I can think of about three, maybe four places that I've got on my list. One in Chicago, one in Jackson, a couple in Texas. Closer to home, even, there's a couple, I think, around here that I wouldn't mind going to in the Detroit area and Ohio. Pennsylvania. Okay. (laughs) I don't know anything about what's in Pennsylvania. Uh, Boswell's. Oh, that's that where Boswell's is? Okay. Yeah. And there's a pipe shop around Flint, Michigan that I want to check out. That's that that's what that's one of the ones I was talking about. Actually, is the one in Flint. Yeah, that one's definitely been uh, well recommended to me. But yeah, like for you, um, like I said before, because our our tastes do tend to uh, be the same or pretty close anyway. Um a good trial for you with John David's offerings would be either Cornishman or Angry Cornishman, depending on where you want to go in regards to the amount of Latakia in the blend. But they're both fairly mild, even with extra Latakia in it. Yeah. Yeah, no, that that definitely appeals to me. Uh, So that would definitely be on my list of uh, tobaccos to try from them and it's funny, I, I closed the page of uh, their website a little bit ago, and here, now that we're talking about it, I'm opening it again to <laughs> look at their uh, available selections. So what's your what's your next blend? Uh, my next blend would be, uh, it's in this pipe. It is a uh, in this K. Woody here. It's uh, by a you know, not as popular company as uh, C&D or Country Squire, but uh, they make good tobacco. It's uh, FNK, and the blend is called Lancer Slices. Uh, the description for it here is, uh, this almost black tobacco combines the best grades of naturally sweet Virginia and smoky Latakia matured together under pressure. A wonderfully smooth and full-bodied mixture, reminiscent of uh, the old Bengal slices. And for me, like I am a big fan of uh, classic pipe tobacco. Uh, what you know, getting a chance to try the you know the, the legendary blends out there, and uh, Bengal slices was always one that uh, I had heard about and wanted to try. Uh, Earth and Home came out with uh, a blend a couple of years ago when I first started smoking a pipe called Fusilier's Rash, and, and that's another blend that is based off of Bengal Slices. And tried that, 
really enjoyed it, but I wanted uh, something that I could sell her uh, and wasn't limited to just uh, a tin. And that, uh, and that's when I heard about uh, Lancer Slices because uh, that's only available in bulk. And uh, it's, even though it's out of stock right now on uh, smoking pipes, uh, keep an eye out for it because it's a really good blend. You know, you normally don't really see a whole lot of English blends that are in a flake or broken flake form. And uh, this is like a chunky bulk blend when you get it. You, you definitely mm. see, you know, good portions of flake in there. And it's very, it's very smoky, but, uh, it, you know, it reminds me a lot also of uh, uh, Seattle Pipe Club's Plump Pudding. And uh, so anytime that I have that kind of, uh, I'm in the mood of a good, a uh, lot of Kia blend. It's uh, Lancer Slices is, and Plum Pudding are the two that I go for. And uh, what's really nice about this is, blend is, uh, you know, I have two K Woody pipes and, you know, I like the look of them, but they're not necessarily my favorite pipes to smoke. Uh, there's something about the stem and the stinger that kind of gives a, uh, almost like a plasticky kind of taste to it. But I don't get that taste or sensation from uh, when I smoke uh, Lancer Slices. And so I always use that pipe in that, uh, with that blend together. And it's a good combination. So I highly recommend uh, Lancer Slices. And if uh, you want to try that, go for that. Uh, and also, you know, since we're on the topic of it, uh, even though I haven't had it in a few years, uh, Fusilier's Ashen is also uh, quite good and worth checking out too. Hmm. Well, I definitely have a few more blends to add to my list. That's for sure. Some to that's try fun, out. Well, yeah, no, the, and this is the, what I like about these type of discussions is that, uh, I, I'm always interested when I hear about a new blend that I haven't, uh, you know, discovered yet. And it's a, like, I have a, a list on my phone of, uh, when somebody recommends a blend, I always add it to that list. And whenever it comes around time for Christmas or uh, International Pipe Smoking Day, I kind of run through that list. Now, not as much these days because it's more about uh, cellaring favorites that I already have or restocking. But I always throw one or two new blends on there. Yeah, and International Pipe Smoking Day is the best time to try new blends because typically you can get them at a reduced rate. And if you're really lucky, like me, you have Christmas money and birthday money to go ahead and make a few orders from various different places and take advantage of a few deals. Absolutely. That's a perfect, uh, perfect time to try something new. Yeah, because I think this year, or next year, I guess, when you think about it, it'll be 2021, thinking of getting some more Country Sire Squire blends up here, and I'm thinking um, that I want to try some fourth generation blends out, because I know some new stuff's coming down the, down the line if it's not released already. Yeah, and that's, uh, you know, I've only really tried one blend from that line, but uh, that's another, you know, tobacco company that I really want to try uh, some different uh, uh, styles of. So I think the blend that I have is uh, 1855. It is a kind of like a broken flake. It also helps that we hear about the blends every once in a while, since we typically see Max online once a week. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a good point. Well, should I uh, go ahead and talk about my last blend? Uh, yeah, you had the third review yeah, there. Like, yeah. uh, Let's go for it. Yeah, and um, when we recorded last time, this was actually the blend that I was smoking. 
uh, at that point, um, but it's uh, Corn Elm Deal's Stovepipe. And it was actually my first time smoking the blend. It's a, uh, a trail of bright and red Virginias uh, winds its way upward, ascending to the summit of Perique, dark burley leaf, and black Cavendish, lightly topped with flavors of cocoa, caramel, and uh, vanilla. It makes for a sublime, exhilarating smoke. Definitely one of the more flowery uh, blend descriptions there. So whoever uh, wrote that description, I hope they got a nice uh, little payday for that because uh, it's uh, very appealing. And I'd first heard about this blend uh, back in the 2018 Chicago Pipe Show uh, from Piper Dave, uh, who's on uh, This Pipe Life and uh, Instagram and other places. And uh, he had bought a tin of it and was a big fan. So I always, you know, made that mental note to pick it up one day. And I recently had the chance to do that. I didn't realize that it was a crossover blend, but uh, yeah, no, this is a, I would, I would definitely recommend this blend for aromatic smokers that are looking for, uh, looking to get their feet wet in different types of tobacco because it has the, the taste and the strength of a, of a non-aromatic, but the room note uh, even though I generally don't really get a chance to smell the room note of a, the tobacco that I'm smoking, it was definitely apparent enough that uh, I, I feel it's quite pleasant and definitely a blend that you would want to smoke around people uh, in public or around the campfire. You know, something that uh, won't offend too many people. But uh, I, I, uh, I highly recommend this one. This is on... It is available on smokingpipes.com so that it is in stock. And uh, again, it's, uh, you know, I'm used to more of the crossover blends that are English blends, but uh, for a, uh, a Virginia type blend that's a crossover with an aromatic, I, I think it's, uh, you can't go wrong with it. I really do. Yeah, there's some crossover blends that, or at least, well, at least one that I have that I haven't smoked in a bit, but I've got uh, a few tins back of. Maybe the next time we do something like this, I'll bite the bullet and crack one open. This has been a few years since uh, since I've had it, and it'd be interesting to see how it aged, if it aged at all. But, uh Yeah. Crossovers are, are definitely blends to go at after if you're a new pipe smoker looking to just expand your palate a little bit, get some different different tastes out there. Looking for things that maybe aren't so goopy and don't have to sit out and dry for a day before you smoke them. Yeah. Looking at you, Sutliff. Thankfully, uh, even though their blends are definitely on the goopier side, of, they still have some that are, are well worth giving a try, like East Farthing. Oh, absolutely. East, East Farthing's good. Um, uh, their English Crumble Cake number one, that's a good one, too. You don't have mm -hmm. to dry that one out. Um, speaking... I know Modi is a, a big fan of uh, Malto. Uh, Malto Doce. Yeah, Malto Doce. Although it, it was a, a sad day when we got the email that uh, the Sutliff Virtual Pipe Club went defunct. Yeah, no, that's a shame. I uh, I was sad to see that it was because of a lack of engagement. Uh, it's disappointing to me because, uh, I mean, I certainly participated every time that uh, it, it popped up. And honestly, I, I didn't get a bad blend in, uh, in the bunch. And uh, especially like, you know, I would never would have tried East Farthing if it wasn't for this. And uh, that's definitely one that I would pick up again. Yeah, East Farthings, you know, that's how I tried it as well. Same with Sutliff uh, English uh, Crumble Cake number one. Um, let's see. Then 
there were a couple there that I actually already had. So getting them again, even though the price was good, I already had some on hand. I didn't really need any more for my seller. So it kind of threw me out. And I wonder perhaps if maybe that was the issue they were running into that more seasoned smokers already had these blends. So they, they weren't participating as much as they may have otherwise. Right. They did a lot of uh, match blends for, um, for Dunhill blends. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the, I mean, I was happy to try it because like I never got a chance to really try either early morning pipe or um, nightcap. So I was excited to try both of those, but, uh, yeah, no, it was a, it was a sad day for me when I got that email, I was kind of uh, a little bit in disbelief. Uh, but, uh, no, I, I don't think they watched the show, but, uh, you know, thank you to all the Sutliff people for at least, uh, giving that program a try and, uh, you know, you deserve a lot of credit for it. And I, uh, very forward thinking. I just, uh, I don't understand why uh, not more people were into it. Uh, again, I think it was great. Yeah, it was a capital idea. I mean, we both, like you said, both uh, ended up with a couple of blends that we'd never tried before, and they're both tasty and delicious and worth picking up again if uh, the opportunity arises. Um, yeah. Like I said, for me, it was just they got into blends that I already had and I I had done some match blending of theirs. Like I had uh, their match for 965 and I had 965 here. So um, maybe I'll dig it up even though it didn't fit the parameters of my Flashback Fridays. Maybe I'll dig it up for a Flashback Friday and uh, put that episode out there so you can hear my thoughts on 965 versus the Sutliff match for 965. Which actually was one of the blends that they put they they put out in the pipe club, so that was really unhelpful for me because I'm saying yeah I've got four ounces of this blend or more here already. But I think what it came down to is they they weren't getting the participation on the social media that they were looking for. If I re remember that uh. email right, and I'm saying well of course you're not, you're doing this on Facebook. You'd probably had a better shot if you were doing it on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I think Twitter would have been a better uh, place for it. I mean, uh, when I was on Facebook, I was certainly involved in uh, one pipe group, but uh, I'm definitely more involved in uh, on the Twitter world of uh, pipe smoking than I am on Facebook. But anyway, time to transition out of the show because, you know, it's getting close to that time and we're actually coming in a little bit lighter on the time than we did the first time around, but we had a chance to work out all the kinks. So there's that. So if you'd like to keep up with us uh, throughout the week, I'm at DRAllen201 on almost every social media platform out there. You can follow the show on Twitter at Syndicated Pipe. Greg, where can the good folks find you? Yes, uh, you can still find me on Twitter at the underscore Badger Piper. And uh, so you can see my thoughts here and there on there. Uh, and you can also find me on Instagram at uh, the Badger Piper, all one word. And if social media just isn't your thing, you can always check out our website for the show at fandompipes.wixsite.com slash syndicated pipe club. And there you find things like uh, previews of the episodes that'll go out. To, like, I try to do that the Monday before for the episode. So you'll find about 30 seconds there of the episode that'll come out on Wednesday. And uh, also you can find there the YouTube video linked for the most recent video. And uh, of course, you can also find us right here on YouTube. Yeah, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell so that you'll be notified as soon as our latest video uploads. Also, be sure to check out our, the podcast version of the show, which you can find on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and much more. And I do want to apologize to those of you who were spammed by me 
testing live stream stuff earlier today um, or in the case of when you're actually hearing this last week because on Thursday because I uh, well was trying to figure out the problems we were having with uh, the software and whatnot and I think I got it all worked out now so hopefully I can at the very least I can go live on Monday we'll see if Greg can join me or not we'll just have to see how the scheduling works out and if you want to send us an email, you can always do that too. You can get in touch with us at reverseflashtime at gmail.com, our recycled flash email address. Well, Greg, for the second time, we've got another one in the books. Yes, I would rate this podcast episode four out of four stars. It was a nice conversation with uh, some depth to it, but also some lightheartedness. So uh, recommended for all listeners. And with that being said, everybody, I'm going to wish you have a good week, good smokes, great entertainment, and we will see you next time. things, children, pets, imaginary friends, metahumans, metatechs, speedsters, tricksters, pranksters, jokers, lobsters, mobsters, photographers, tripods, monopods, cephalopods, decapods, pea pods, construction pods, inspection pods, starships, spaceships, sailing ships, federations of planets, galactic empires, worlds of wizards and witchcraft, worlds of sci-fi, Jedi, pirates, seas of thieves, plants, bugs, orcs, elves, gnomes, fairies, or chickens named Larry were harmed during the making of this program. If you enjoyed the show, this has been a DR Allen 201 production. If you didn't enjoy this show, this has been a Canadian National All-Inclusive Choir production. Thanks for listening, everybody, and have a great day. Mm-hmm.